What's cracking, YouTube? It's holiday weekend. I'm back at the homestead. Going to take advantage of having the welder nearby and do another fabrication project. This one for the Jeep. Let me show you. So now that I've added these hefty front and rear bumpers, I've had the bug to kind of finish up the protection project with some rock sliders to go along right here. Now the main thing that we need to protect is this piece right here. Uh, because that's part of the main body, which is also therefore part of the frame on these XJs. So I'm not so much worried about the doors because if those get dinged up, they're more fixable or much more easily replaced. So here's a couple of thoughts that I have had. I've looked at several designs and I think some of them are overdone as far as they use like two by six tubing. And I just don't see the purpose of that. It's a lot of extra weight and kind of wasted um, protection. So the other thing I've seen is that some of them are almost like a step. They come way out um, and that's, that's fine. Except that I have had it happen where I've gone through a water crossing or something kind of muddy and dirty and gotten the bottom of the Jeep coated. And then when I got out of my Jeep, um, I brushed this bottom and transferred mud and dirt and grime and all that stuff onto my pants and not terribly uh, excited about that. So I've decided I do not want something that really protrudes out. So I think I'm going to bring it out, line it up maybe with this bottom edge of the door, kind of the flare of the door. So it'll be out, oh, I don't know, a, an inch or two. And um, I think that'll work. That'll work for me. So I have already picked up the material. I did take some video of that. I'll insert it here. Right, I'm here at Pacific Steel in Pocatello. This good gentleman here is grabbing a piece of quarter inch, two by three. It's a 20 foot long piece. I bought the whole thing. He's gonna cut it in half so I can fit it in my trailer. I need about six feet to cover this and then some about one foot pieces to attach to the frame and come over. Alrighty, we are loaded up, strapped down. That'll get me home. Yeah, that ought to do just great. To recap, it is two by three rectangle tube quarter inch thick. I think this will give me great protection. So it'll probably hang out on the top halfway. Maybe we'll see and still give plenty of protection on the bottom side. So that 20 foot piece costs $247 and a little change with tax. It came out to 262 even. Now let me tell you real quick what I have gone through the journey on these uh, rock sliders. Uh, I've had them planned for a while, debated making them at first, but came across several that were in a very reasonable price range and for how much time they would save me and the fact that they were already powder coated was well worth the extra expense uh, over just the building materials. I found one set that I liked, it was pretty good, and I've been had that in my wish list and been kind of sitting on it. Got the bug. Once I got the bumpers on, I kind of wanted to, the rock sliders in my mind are kind of a similar thing. And so I wanted to kind of finish up that aspect of the upgrades. I had the money to do it. I went to place an order and found that over the last six to eight weeks, those rock sliders have more than doubled in price to over 
and as of last night, they were eight to nine weeks estimated before they even ship. So it was uh, a pretty easy choice to go back to making it myself. So I picked up the uh, rectangle tube, of course, and then I also have some 12 by 12 by quarter inch uh, plates that I got off of Amazon um, on their way. Today, my objective is to get these rectangles and the bracing cut and then we'll get those other plates when I can get them. I can cut those at my place. I will have to eventually bring them back up here to weld on. That's okay. Uh, let me show you some other things with the design. The nice thing about doing them yourself is that you can make a couple of changes and there are a few that I'm planning to make and I've drawn those out. Let me show you. I am not an artist in this sense, performing artist. I'm pretty good, but this uh, art, very rudimentary, but you'll get the point here. I'll get rid of that. So down here's our rock sliders and everybody I've seen make them always cuts a 45 degree angle right here. And some of that may have to do with cutoff wheels and such typically max out at 45 degrees. I want a little bit of a wider angle here, thinking that the sharper the angle, the more rocks will be able to kind of hang up on it. So I want a wider angle so that there's a little, it can slide more. So not drastic, and I don't know if you can really even perceive the difference here. Um, it's slight but I'm thinking something more like 60 degrees. Let's start with that. And then I've got a couple decisions to make on how to actually attach these to the Jeep, but I think it will help me sort that out once I get these cut and in place. So let's take one final measurement. This should be right about six feet in length. I'll verify that and we'll get going on some cut. Okay, see if you can follow my math logic here. My basic math skills, I think, have figured this out. So uh, I am very pleased that this rectangular tube is a true two inch by three inch outside diameter. So I do have a regular square here that is two inches on this one side. So that lines up nicely. So if I remember my geometry correctly, which I was not good at geometry, but this I think I can do. Going from this corner here back two inches or height of this tube, that would give me my 45 degree corner based off of this, uh, this side right here. So this would be 90, that would give me 45. If I go back three inches, that would cut that in half, which would make it 22 and a half inches. Now that angle, that three inch angle, that's a little more than I want. So I'm gonna split the difference and this is totally based off of my icrometer. I'm gonna go two and a half inches back, which if my math is correct, gives me 33 and a quarter inches, 33 and three quarter degrees, excuse me. And that angle I think I like. So it would end right here, go from the corner to here. So roughly that angle. For the record, I did a measurement, did it twice, uh, the length I need. Um, I did have to decide what to do about the fender flares, whether to overlap those with the rock sliders. I've decided I am going to do that. Uh, and accounting for that, the total length I need is 67 inches. All right, here's my setup for the first cut. I marked my two spots and then drew a line and then remembered I had this piece of scrap with a pretty nice factory straight edge on it. So I grabbed that, obviously C clamped it on. That's gonna be my guide so I'm not free handing this cut. To make this first cut, I'm gonna grab the angle grinder and get her done. I have the first one cut in place just to get a visual. It's, uh, I am stoked how this is working out. So I really like these angles. Comes down off of the 
wheel well and then does a little bit sharper angle before it flattens out. I really like that look. Uh, the lining, the length is lining up perfectly. That's flush with the front. This one is flush with the rear. And I've got about, um, I'd say about an inch between the bar, um, the, the slider and the pinch seam. And uh, I think this is about where I'm gonna want it set. So about half of the uh, three inches is exposed. It's about an inch and a half lining up, as I said before, kind of right with this uh, flare in the door. Not quite, but I think I like where it is. And that's plenty of protection for this part of the body panel right here. So I think that is going to look fantastic. One of the things I wanted to see was if I should put the caps totally on the outside or if I need to put them on the inside. And since I cut these pretty much exactly to length, I'm going to need to put them on the inside. Turns out the end caps are two and a half inch squares. So I've got this piece of scrap that's also quarter inch. Um, so I've marked out my squares here and I should be able to get three out of this one. You can see the two up here and then I should get one more here. Alrighty, I had to do some grinding on that edge, get a good bevel on it. I did some on the top as well, although that's probably not necessary if you do enough on the bottom. Um, I anticipated that, so it wasn't an aha, oh no moment, but now I've got a pretty good fit. I'm happy with that. So time to grab the welder and burn this one in. Here we have the raw result, pretty pleased with that overall. Let's clean this up a little bit, hit it with the grinder, take the high spots off, and this side will be done. So start with Okay, we do have some slag uh, going up to about here. The brush got this stuff off pretty good. Uh, let's grab the uh, hammer. Of course, we've got some whole bunch right here we need to get off as well. A fair amount of that's coming off, but it's probably best to save my time and just hit it with the grinder. Okay, I've been deliberating over a couple things for the last little while, and this is what I have figured out. If I had it to do over, I would cut these at 65 and a half and cap them on the outside. I think that would save probably about an hour and a half of work uh, her rock slider. So live and learn. Uh, I'm going to do it still at 67 because I want them to match. Um, if I cut them short and cap them on the outside, my, my edges are going to look different. And most people would not notice, but I will know and my OCD would be a problem with that. So word to the wise on that one. Okay, I have also decided uh, what I've been mostly thinking about the last little while is how to attach it to the Jeep. And I have decided to go with this model, three rails. Both the front and the back will be offset a little bit. So this is an error that it's flush. It's going to be nine and three quarters. Um, in and the front's going to be nine inches back because of the overlap. I'll show you the overlap in a minute, but this one is going to need to be an eighth inch shorter than these two. I'm going to need flat stock 
on both of these to attach to the frame and I'm going to plan on doing a bolt on each side towards the bottom and uh, I just ordered a rib nut tool, uh, nut zert installer um, and I'm planning to use M12s. I want to use half inch but I also want it to be consistent and a lot of this Jeep is in metric so I'm going to stay metric. So I'm going to go M12. On the rear I am going to attach it to the rear leaf suspension bracket and if I do that I don't need um, any other brackets. I'm going to tap directly into this runner here. Uh, I have a tap and die set back at home that I can use for that that also has an M12 and the material is a quarter inch thick which is this thickness. I think that'll give me just about as much uh, material to grab onto as a regular nut would be so I think it will be good and stout that way. With that the last thing I have to figure out is I do want to also attach it to the pinch seam which is uh, by my calculations going to be an inch behind the rock rail here and I'm still kind of debating how I'm going to do that because these three rails are actually going to be up flush against the uh, pinch seam so I don't need much there so I'm still working that part out alright so here is the first rock slider and that middle piece is how much leftover I have from that first 10 foot bar. I can get five or support rails out of that one piece. In total that really means that I needed about 16 or 17 feet total. So if you were planning on something like this yourself you could take that calculation. That said I'm going to get cutting some uh, brackets for this first one. Start getting that one all finished up. So it's a new day here in the homestead shop garage and uh, the goal today is to get the other rock slider uh, cut and capped and all that. Trying to figure out how to get those rails on the slider and as square as possible it became obvious that the best way to do that was with a welding table. This is just the Harbor Freight one. It's not great quality, but it'll work for what I need. And so it's good enough. Uh, I wish I could afford one like my friend Joe has that is really, really nice, but uh, just I don't do enough welding and this type of work to justify that at this time. So this one will have to work. Uh, it'll be a big improvement over using the racks on the four-wheeler or using the trailer as my stand for stuff. So let's unbox it, get it set up, and then get back to work. It is now together. I've got my welding blanket down to try to save the garage floor. Welder's ready. So now it's time to get back on track with these rock sliders. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to weld up the brackets on the one that's done so I can say that that one is completely done. So let's get things lined up on the table here and see what it looks like. Okay, I've got my three brackets tacked on. Uh, the one from the front, which is this one. This one is slightly shorter, an eighth inch shorter. That's to allow the frame overlaps itself. So this is nine and five eighths long this way. The others are nine and three quarters. And then from the front to this edge right here is 10 inches. And I did that because of an attachment problem at this end, which I'll show you after I get my welding stuff off. This one's right in the center between the two, which is 19 inches each direction. And this one is nine and three quarter inches from the long end to this side. So I've got them tacked on there. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with how square, flush, level everything they are.
So that's my weld. Uh, still need to have the slag knocked off, but um, I heard it ting a couple times as I was going, and the uh, tack welds have let go, at least on this side. Uh, the bottom one on that side as well. So it is pulling a lot of heat. I'll probably have to do less, maybe like half, flip it over, do the other half to avoid warping. But uh, I'm definitely getting better penetration on this. I'm more comfortable with that. So uh, I am going to do this on all. Burned in on all sides. Not the prettiest. I've said it before. I won't win any awards for my welding, but uh, they are structural. I'm pleased with the sound. I'm getting out of them. I just hit, the, hit them all with the hammer. Got the slag mostly off. I'm getting good consistent uh, sound throughout, so they are burned in. That's as far as I will be able to go on this one. And now that I've done it once, I should be able to get the other one made in like half the time. So things must be going right. I'm right in the, towards the end of doing my cuts. I look up and I see this little guy kind of hanging around. It's a little hummingbird hanging out in the garage. I think it's trying to get out and that glare on the ceiling is kind of confusing it a little bit. If maybe I can help guide him out the door here the right way. He's not terribly shy. Let me walk over here. He's doing kind of his regular flying around. Okay, I got ready to do some more welding and then I got concerned about that little hummingbird flying around. So, coincidentally, fortuitously, I had my fishing stuff in the Jeep. So I grabbed my net. This is a nice soft net. It's not even the, the nylon. And uh, spent about half an hour, but I eventually caught it. And sorry I couldn't film it. It was, uh, I needed both hands. But I did take it outside, let it go. It did fly off, so everything is good. And now, let's finish up these rock sliders. So with the proper measurements and know-how, of course the second one went much faster. I did it in about a third of the time I did the first one. Um, still needs to be cleaned up and uh, de-slagged and all that stuff, but the welding is done. It's still hot and I have to call it a weekend for now. So I'm going to go get a little dinner with my mama and then I am going to hit the road back down to Utah. So this is going to be uh, here for about two weeks before I make it back. I am back at the homestead. It's been two weeks. I'm doing a little more work on the rock sliders. So my goal on this trip is to get these capped off. Um, three per rail, so I've got six total. I'm thinking I'm gonna cut them about a quarter inch short so that I have about an eighth inch on each of these long sides. Uh, to weld into and not be proud, um, particularly on the top. And then they are going to be uh, hang over the sides because that's where it's going to bolt into the frame. What I have to do that is this right here. I've got three 12 by 12 by quarter inch plates, so the same thickness as the rails. And I'm going to just cut a strip off um, out of these three plates. I am planning to get uh, the caps and uh, the supports that are going to tie onto the pinch seam on the Jeep. On the front one and the middle one, I need the flange, but on the back one, I only need the cap. On the rear one, I'm going to tap in from the side through the bracket for the leaf spring the front leaf front of the leaf spring. I only need to cap this one, but the other two will need flanges. I believe I have all the hardware. Uh, I picked it up last time I was up while I was at Lowe's and for the attachment right here to the frame, I've got this uh, grade eight half inch by 13 by one inch. Should be plenty of length. So this bolt is the one that I need to make sure I have room for. 
So this is what I'm going to use to determine just how much flange I need on either side. Here is my setup with the goal of getting a smooth and fairly fast, reliable cut. So I'm using my welding table with a C-clamp. I'd like to get more on there, but it's the only one that would fit. And I've measured, of course, my depth to the guard. I'm planning to just put that flat on the table and just run it along for a straight line. Um, obviously, with the C-clamp in the way, I can't go all the way through. There will be a little spot in the middle. But once I have the two sides scored, um, doing that little bit there won't be a problem. I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to get my safety gear on. So I've got my four pieces cut. Uh, one of these ended up a bit short, and I'm not sure how that happened because all my measurements were accurate and after I cut it I checked it again when I noticed it was short everything else was right um, anyway I, it, this one right here it's about an eighth inch off but it'll still work so I will use it and then you can see I have pre-drilled uh, done, done a pilot hole with uh, this little guy here did all eight holes normally I would just punch these but since I had eight of them to preserve the bit, I did use a little oil, as you can see. And uh, it worked great. And little guy held up, got through all of them. Um, it did kind of uh, wear out my hand, though, holding that drill. So I'm going to uh, call it a night, especially since I didn't bring the Jeep and I can't really get these finished. I'm not going to push myself. So work on it a bit tomorrow tomorrow night when I get all right we're back at it all right we got the mid-size holes drilled but when I started working on the half inch hole I buggered up my bit so I can't get any further so I'm gonna have to save that for my nice bit that I have at home so what uh, we're gonna do is go ahead and weld these caps on got the center marked on both pieces line that up I've got this end cap already tacked, so we'll get all three of them on, and then I can go back and forth between them so that they don't overheat. All right, we're back at it. Uh, it's been two, three weeks, I don't remember, but uh, we had the idea last time that a drill press would be way easier than a hand drill, and I just tested it out and punched these holes out using a step bit. Um, this is one of the black oxide Bauer step bits and it cut through this awesome way better than the uh, regular drill bits we were using and just punched right through so this is a great setup all right so this is more or less the finished product it does need to be powder coated and I still need to do the attachment points on the Jeep itself but uh, these are the brackets. This is the driver's side. They are welded on. Uh, I remembered, thankfully, before I welded it on that the front one has to be offset towards the rear a little bit because of where the fender attaches right here. There is a flange that comes over. So we had to um, skip this hole. We're not gonna use that and drill another one. So there will be one in front three in the back on this front one. Uh, so there's four total, uh, one inch from the end and one inch from the center. And I did it that way because if it was, if there was a bolt in the center, we wouldn't be able to get anything up here to, um, to tighten it down. So uh, this gives us access. We're going to repeat this process on the driver's side and then at that point, I can take them to my residence and finish them up from there. So, because there will be no more welding. Happy day. What I need to do now is uh, just clean up some of these welds. And what I mean is like this one right here. I need this whole wall to be flat. And this one is protruding ever so slightly. And then also on these brackets down here, um, I've got some uh, you know, sharp edges that I need to take care of. So 
I don't know if I'll use a file or a grinder, but I'll pretty much take care of those. I'm also thinking on these on the front and back. This is pretty sharp right here. I have filed it, but it's still a little sharper than I'd like it. So I may hit this with the grinder and take a good kind of rip off of this and then round that over quite a bit more. I don't know that there'll be a problem with where they line up on the Jeep, but I'm just not comfortable in the back of my mind knowing there's something that sharp pointing at each tire. Uh, I think I will just soften those edges a little bit and then maybe just kind of chamfer these edges. This one down here is totally fine. These ones, these ones are okay too. So probably just this top one that's got that sharp angle on it. First one is done. I knocked down the sharp edge here. I like it much better. Took a grinder, flattened this maybe to about a 16th wide and then just took the file and just rounded things from there. I like it. Um, of course, flattened this and then got all the bottoms just so there was nothing protruding to hang up on rocks or anything. And then on all the brackets, top and bottom, I just knocked all the edges off. So nothing sharp. And I also rounded all the corners. So nothing sharp sticking out to catch clothes or hit your shin or anything like that. So um, that's pretty much how it is. So I'll do the other one. So that's the goal tonight and then get them loaded up in the car, take them down to my residence and start punching holes in the Jeep for the attachment points. It's been a minute since I've had the rock sliders and the Jeep in the same location. Let's see if we can get them together and get some attachment points worked out. So if possible by myself, what I need to do is get the rock slider up into position and mark some holes to drill uh, and get some holes drilled in that bracket right there because that's my rear attachment point. And then I've got the front two. And then I also need to get some in the pinch seam right here. And I'm going to have to drill all of those out. Uh, this would be much easier with a second pair of hands, but my helper is a little under the weather. So, so I'm going to see what I can do by myself today. Okay first real test fit and this is what I am seeing this angle I really like the profile although it does appear yeah I do think that the front is out slightly further than the back but I don't think anybody other than myself would notice that okay on the alternate brackets here um, this is the first time I've had it in place since those have been welded on and I think I have a little grinding to do you can see on that one right there that front one is a little bit high so I think I need to take that down so I can get this whole thing up a little bit that'll help in the middle where we have some space and the back appears to be slanted a little bit. So I'll see if maybe um, I can hit that with the torch and just bend one of those wings up. I think might be the easiest thing to do. And then the one other alignment issue, and I don't think this is major, but the front one is uh, onto the frame is lining up right where I want it. That's perfect. You can see that one apparently didn't get welded on straight and it's hanging down a bit. Um, I'll look at it and see if I can see that from a different perspective. The back one is also lined up exactly where I want it. So maybe I just need to cut this front one off and weld it back on at a better angle. I'm not happy about that, but it might be the best thing to do. But I'm going to go ahead and mark these because they are good and uh, mark the back where I can drill those onto that back bracket. And then I'll see about getting these marked so I can start getting some of these drilled. If 
I can get a couple bolts in to hold this, I should be able to just really pop the rest of them out as far as the drilling goes and make pretty quick work of it. Okay, so I've got my first nut certs put in, uh, my first ones ever. Overall, once I figured out how to use the uh, crimper, um, it was really pretty straightforward. So I've got the holes punched, those are in there. Um, the one on the left ended up a little bit high. I'm not sure how that happened, but uh, I'll find a way to make it work. Got the uh, two holes punched for the bracket and also got pilot holes drilled on the back bracing. Um, I'm waiting for a different uh, step bit. Uh, this one worked pretty well on the frame, but um, these uh, steps are a little bit too shallow to go through this. I've got a thicker one up at the homestead where I'm going tomorrow. So I'll grab that while I'm there and then get those to the right size. I do think I can tap this and put the bolts directly into it and I think it will hold just fine. That's what I'm waiting on on that. And then on these other supports, I did get the right side of this one bent up a little bit. I think when from cutting, I got my angles off a little bit and this back support ended up slanted this way. And so I was able to just grind off the top a little bit and uh, bend up the bottom and get that pretty leveled out. On these other two, with the flap disc, I just took off uh, some high points which happened to both be on the left ends. So here are my two 7 16 holes, half inch die or tap, excuse me, ready to go. Looking at the thickness of my metal, which is quarter inch, I think I'm going to get about two, two and a half threads into that, which should be sufficient for what I am asking this to do. I'm going to set up the camera so you can watch along with me and uh, let's give this a go. So I'm just working on the ground here. So this is Oh, a foot or so above the ground, maybe a little more. I've done a little bit of tapping, but not a ton. But I will say that the bigger you're using, my experience has been the easier it is to do. I'm going to have to use my eyecrometer here. And that's really looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. I think it's close enough. So let's go ahead. Oh. But didn't quite catch here. I think I'm nope. So it's trying to dig in without. 64th might actually make a difference. It wants to, but it's just not biting. I just don't have the force to keep it going and turn it at the same time. I may have to get something to ream this out just ever so slightly so I can get a good bite. I'm gonna have to think about it. I'll bring you back in when I have a solution. All right, I did get a new bit for this and I did already uh, drill it out. It took off a, a little bit. Let's see if it made enough difference that I can now get this tap to bite and set. Here we go. That's the magic spot right there. Got it. Okay, so that little like sixteenth of an inch did the trick.
So I've got this up in place. Um, I'm really liking this look. Um, except that it's not even. It clearly sticks out a little bit more in the front than in the back. Um, but everything is lined up on the other side. Underside, I should say. I'm pretty against the frame on that one. There might be an eighth inch there. So I might go in a little bit. But I'm going to try something different on this one. Before, I did the front first, pretty much in that position, because that's right where I want it. Similar to the other side, you can see how this one is hanging down just a little bit. Not as bad as the other side, I don't think. But this back side's also a little bit underneath. So, I think if I get the back side up to pivot up, that will solve the problem in the middle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the back first. I'm going to get these holes tapped, drilled and tapped on both of these. And then I'm going to put these bolts in to hold the back in place. And then I can get the front situated. So I've run into a little bit of a problem. I got a little bit complacent putting in these riv nuts and stripped out that one on the left. Um, I just didn't get enough threads on it on the tool itself when I cranked it down it pulled out the last couple threads I don't know if you'll be able to see that and now I've tried to fix it in several different manners and it started to spin which is kind of like the worst nightmare with these I do have an access hole I can probably get a pair of pliers in there that I could hold on to it and re-tap it but I don't want to do that so what I'm going to do is grab the grinder grind off this outside lip push it to the inside and then uh, fish it out probably through that hole right there and then do another one and do it right as you can see I got the old one out uh, just two or three minutes with the grinder made pretty quick work of it then I took a punch and knocked it in with the hammer and then fished it out with the help of a magnet and that is taken care of and then I got a new one set it has been a minute but it is time to get this project uh, finalized and wrapped up so um, I've got the nut zerts on the passenger side all completed but I realized as I was doing that that I don't have any wiggle room on these holes I drilled these to almost the exact size of my bolts and um, I know just from putting the nut certs in that they are not precisely aligned to these. And so I need a little bit of wriggle room. So what I'm going to do right now is drill these holes out a little bit bigger. These are, I'm pretty sure, half inch holes. I'm going to go 9 sixteenths. So up a sixteenth of an inch. And I believe that will give me the clearance that I need to uh, get all these bolts to, to feed. I have all six of my primary bolts started. And yes, marking or uh, drilling them out to a bigger size, definitely the way to go. Um, they would not have lined up otherwise. I've got one tight one on each section. So one here, one there and one in the back which gives me my placement and now I can check on the fitment for these brackets up here now on a previous dry fit I was concerned that I had miscalculated the size or angle of these and they weren't going to fit but I believe now I'm in pretty good shape so if you look at the back one the back one is right where I need it so I just need to drill those holes Again, I will probably drill the ones in these brackets. Excuse my shadow here. Um, I'll probably drill these a little bit bigger because once again, I drilled them exactly the size of the bolt. And I think I'm gonna need a little wiggle room. I'm going to mark the back and then um, see if I can push this edge up a little bit so that the uh, top is flush with the bottom of the of the jeep so currently i've got a slight 
slope downwards and I think I can use the jack to, uh, to correct that. I'm having some technical difficulties with my camera so I am switching to my phone to finish this project. So you'll probably see a color shift here. Uh, it is what it is. I am super excited. I'm coming down the home stretch of these rock sliders. Um, let me uh, flip the camera around and show you where we're at. I've just finished installing the last two riv nuts. So I now have all of those in on both sides. I found here on the driver's side that I needed to enlarge these two rear um, rear holes um, to line things up. I've enlarged the holes on both the uh, brackets here and on the attachment points at the back, which um, is allowing everything to line up. On some of these brackets, I had to um, drill holes in a different place because they weren't lining up with my pinch welds quite where I wanted. Generally, they were too low and I just didn't feel they were gonna grab enough material. So I went ahead and marked them as I had them in place and just drilled new holes. And what I'm going to do is um, take my welder and fill in the old holes. Two reasons for that. That, where those holes are drilled, tends to be a weak spot. I've found when I've tried to bend these around a little bit, that that's where they naturally buckle. So I wanna get some strength back in there. And secondly, um, less holes is less places to rust. Speaking of bending, you can see on that, middle bracket this is on the passenger side um, I did get that bent so that it will go flush against the um, pinch weld um, that took a little work to get it to bend not where the hole was but I was able to do it so with that the last big project I have to do is to drill the holes in the pinch weld. So it took me about 10 minutes to set up and weld all of these, which is uh, markedly better than in the old days. So I've got these um, all filled and uh, there were six all together, four on this tube and two on the other one. And um, with those filled and ready, these are ready to get powder coated. So the next time you see these, they should be back from powder coating, I expect, and ready to mount. And we'll be pretty much wrapped up with this project. It is an exciting day. Rock sliders are back from being powder coated. They are almost ready to put on. I have one thing left to do. I need to punch a drain hole in this back bar. I've contemplated doing it on all of them, but I'm pretty confident that I've got a good seal on all of them, so I don't think any moisture is gonna be getting in there, except for this back one, which has these two holes in it and is subject to at least some condensation, if not actually getting water in, should I go through water crossings or something. Okay, quick and easy. I opted for a 1 8 inch and I punched one in each end of this rear tube. That should allow for good drainage and airflow. And um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get really much paint up in there, so I'm just going to leave it. So this driver's side is ready to go on. At long last, this project has come to an end. I didn't get these on until after dark last night, so I waited until it was light out to show you the end result. Rock sliders installed. They're nice and stout. An evaluation on the scope of this project. This was a big project for me, um, almost overwhelming. In the long run, would I do it again? I don't know. Um, calculating my costs, um, especially with the powder coating, um, I, they were about the same price as something I could have bought commercially. 
Um, the big advantage to having made them myself is that they are exactly what I wanted. So they've got the angles on the front that I like. Um, they're rectangular tube versus round tube, which I think matches the aesthetic of the Jeep better. Um, and they, they stick out the exact amount that I wanted. They're not too far out. They're not recessed. They're usable. Uh, my wife mentioned she now has something she can step on to get in. Now, they're not a huge step, but they are... Um, there is enough purchase there that you could step on them if you needed to. But they don't stick so far out that you can't get in the Jeep comfortably. So that aspect of it, I, um, I really like. But is that enough to compensate for the ease of buying something pre-manufactured that you can just put on? Um, I'm on the fence there. But they're done. It's something I'm proud of, not something I would market that I could or would want to do again. But, uh, but they're there. And um, now that they are on, they look super awesome. So that wraps this one up. Thanks for watching. If you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, that would really help my channel, and I would greatly appreciate it. See you on the next one.